Hello and welcome along to Off the Court Does New Zealand and the Tiny Jameson Trophy, The Rewind. Although coming up, we've got two of England's roses fresh from the series. Plus, we'll talk the new Netball Super League season with Claire Nelson, Managing Director of the League, no less. Tamsin Greenway is here, as you may have noticed, and Finn the Dog, too, making a, a special appearance. I'm not sure we have to pay Finn's owner any money for this appearance, do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he's chilled now. He's, he's good. Okay. Well, Finn might make his own introduction throughout the show. There's lots to talk about. With Claire later, I want to find out your, your thoughts on leaving Scotland. So we'll leave that for a bit, the emotional side of it. But let's reflect on the hype around the, the netball season coming and also that New Zealand series. New Zealand first off, Tamsin, I know you've spoken loads about it. Is there anything you haven't got off your chest about England's performance in New Zealand? You know what? I, I tweeted out afterwards. I, I have more questions about that series than I probably do answers. And, and, you know, yeah, we've talked loads about how New Zealand were and their rebuild and what that looks like for Nolene. We've talked about the coaching setup there, which was interesting and different. We've talked about, um, you know, players being taken and do they sit in the crowd? Uh, which I don't agree with. I think um, I think there's been so much. I, I guess the biggest conversation for me moving forward is what next? Like you've just tried out a load of new players. Where do some of the people that didn't go sit now in this? Like what what does that even look like? And, I, and it's brilliant. We've got more depth. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. But I I do kind of refuse to believe that you know we can just rotate sort of 21 people in and around, which is probably what we've we've got now, right? Um, because when you look at Aussie, they make the tough decisions and leave people out because of stars that they want to play. And, and I guess that's probably the next talking point from this series, because it was brilliant. It, it was absolutely everything we needed and definitely everything we needed to carry on some momentum from the World Cup heading into the Super League. There's two things I find frightening. And from the, the Netball World Cup, still wearing the merch, uh, to the series in New Zealand. And the two things are Jamaica and New Zealand out of both camps I've heard over the last few weeks New Zealand don't have enough strength and depth in their league and Jamaica equally don't have enough strength and depth. look at what they're doing on so-called not having enough strength and depth in their league so when do we find a, a balance between Australia we know they've got levels and levels and levels of great players right England yeah. who we've just said have got real strength and, and depth if New Zealand and Jamaica and other teams, nations oh. get there, so are England still underperforming? Yeah. Is my point. I, I, I didn't. No, no, and yes. There's, 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 like, there's so much to unpick on that, right? I think what you just did there with all this, this is the thing for me. Where's the middle ground? So we want to be doing exactly what Australia are doing, right? We want to have a really good league that produces players. And if some go off and play over there, that's fine because we've got enough. Because New Zealand don't have that. Jamaica certainly don't have that. South Africa have not got to that stage yet. So, you know, we are doing the right things. Absolutely. I guess the, the argument becomes, do all of them need to put on a red dress to prove that they're good? And I guess that was kind of my, my debate here. Do we need to try out three people in every position? No, we need to pick a couple that go, right, these are our next ones taking us through and this is what's going to happen. Mm. And then those others playing in the Super League are challenging you all the time. So if you come out of form or you get injured or whatever, then you get an opportunity. So I'm not sure we found the middle ground yet. I think Australia have done it very well, which is why they continue to thrive New Zealand certainly haven't they do need more depth they are going to have to be more open-minded about their league because they've become so insular and Jamaica it's difficult for them just for them for the size of the country and and the opportunities there and and the lack of um financial support you know for, for those guys I tell you the one you need to be wary of is South Africa because if they get it right I, I mean they could be lethal I've seen some of their talent coming through we've played against some of their A team and and they are also very, very good. Funny you should say that. We will talk South Africa and the series to come in just a bit. But let's end our reflections then on that New Zealand test. Gail spoke to Amy Carter and Sophie Drakeford-Lewis. Well, congratulations, um, girls, ladies. Uh, it wasn't quite the result, but when you reflect on the last few weeks and the fact that you went to the last quarter of the last test match, you must be very proud of what you've done. 
we had a lot of belief coming into this. Um, and so it was really great to see the performances that we were able to put out there. And yeah, as you say, it really pushed it to the last quarter of the final game um, to see who was going to win the series. And we couldn't really expect more than that. Who stood up? Who were the amazing characters in your squad when things got tough that you learned? God, they might be young, but these girls are, you know, they've got something about them. Yeah, we, we said at the start that we wanted to be learners, not knowers, and everyone in the group wanted to, definitely does have a contribution and they do have knowledge and everyone is an equal table that everyone can speak at. Um, it's definitely young ones like Liz and Barry who were very knowledgeable. I was room sharing with Liz for quite a bit and I got a little insight into her brain and she's got she's got a lot to say and she's got a lot of knowledge <laughs> on her side. But then we've also got experienced people like Hannah Jay and Elle McDonald and um, Sasha who also have the information to pass on to all of us. So it was a mix and everyone kind of came in, me, SEL and Hallie, this is our first time being in a leadership role. So we were definitely learning and trying to build and having conversations throughout to make sure that we were building on that. You've had Liana taking that role of coach. Um, how was that? We sort of got a sense of the passion, you know, that last team talk she gave before the final quarter. You know, this is your moment, seize that moment. She's really seen kind of, how the whole Roses team kind of is run by Jess, but has also like stepped into that role and kind of brought her own. Um, she's so calm, so composed most of the time, but knows when it's needed to kind of like lift everyone and give us that energy and that belief that we know that we can go out there and perform on the court. You've got all these players to come back. You must feel like you're at the start of a journey which can really take you to some amazing places yeah it's, it's been a really good experience and I think a lot of players have got exposure I think it's probably going to be quite a tough selection process it's only exciting to see that we've got quite a few coming back from who are on World Cup rest um and so yeah it's, it's going to be an exciting few months ahead in the run-up to the South Africa series there's a lot of love for Joe Harton from what we saw here watching her coach that you both got smiles when I mentioned um, what's she like? I mean, Joe Harton as a player was so passionate and that none of that passion has um, gone now that she stepped into that coaching role. Um, she just has so much energy and desire and kind of knowledge that she wants to pass on onto all of us. And it's it's amazing to have her back in this environment whilst it's not as a player, but as a coach now, she stepped into that role so well. Um, and she brings so much to both the players, but also the coaching team. Um, so, yeah, it's been great to have her around. Right. Let's talk fixtures, shall we? This is off the court with Managing Director of the Netball Super League, Claire Nelson, which is the first time we've been able to call you that. Congratulations first. I'm like, I know it's been a while. <laughs> it's like saying congratulations on being born, but it's the first time we've chatted about it. It's it's the first time I've chatted to anyone about it. I'm four months in post and this is my first official interview. So, no, it's exciting to kind of get out from the shadows of the office and actually start talking Netball Super League. Well, I say it's like being born. Has it felt like giving birth the last four months? Oh, I'd rather give birth. Um, not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> and anyone that's, that's unfortunately heard my birth stories will know it's... Uh, yeah, it's been tough. I'm not going to lie. I definitely feel like I've aged a little bit. But, you know, as we were talking before we came on air, you know, this is a big job. If it was easy, we would be there. We'd be doing it. And so, you know, for me, I knew what I was taking on. It's definitely been tougher. But also, like, there's just so many positive things happening that makes me realize and see that, yeah, we can do this. And, and you know, it just keeps you going forward. But, yeah, lots, lots going on. And it's, uh, it's a big job. Let's talk fixtures then, uh, before we get emotional over you two leaving Scotland. We'll do that at the end of this. Um, Tamsin, we had a little look at the fixtures and we're like, yes, this looks like it's it's building. Yeah, absolutely. And I did my annual tweet of, come on, guys, show up. Like We, we absolutely need to get behind our sport this year. We know... Um, we know we've been building since COVID like everybody has and getting back to people back into venues. And I, I just think there's so many exciting things from the big arena announcements as well. I mean, Saracens Mavericks, we're going to be at Wembley, which has been absolutely Ooh. incredible to think exactly we're going to be playing there. I saw um, Dragons announcement. There's been huge, huge pulls all over the country, but it is that big... Um, that big pull to go, show up, come on, get back watching our sport. Just, I think I said last night, you know, if the 1.3 million people that play netball all just bought one ticket, you know, we'll have 
quadrupled the amount of people that come to watch our game just just that simply so i think it is a massive sort of plea now to there are enough games there are enough venues there are enough spread out there are great teams there's going to be some classic fixtures so it is time now to get bums on seats yeah thank you claire goodbye you don't need to say anything do you uh, literally i was like there you go job done i can i can go back to uh working behind the scenes and, and she's absolutely right look this sport is huge all I do is sit and pitch to broadcasters, partners, potential sponsors about the size of this sport. And it is growing at a huge, huge rate. The participation base is there. We also have more than 50% of the population. Now, what we do know is that we needed to make some improvements. We need to make sure that that disposable income that is so precious to women and girls is spent well with an amazing uh, experience. And boy, have the clubs stepped up. Absolutely, as T said, you know, moving to bigger arenas. This costs clubs fortunes to go into arenas. But they're putting on the show and the spectacle because we need to get the fans and the bums on seats. Without fan power, we don't exist. We can't commercialise our sport. We cannot fund the clubs. We can't bring the partners and the sponsors on board. So we've listened. We're making improvements. There's been some amazing recruitment this year. We're bringing big players in. It's going to be competitive. And what we now need is fans showing up and really making sure that they're not just buying one ticket, but buy them week in, week out. Tell your friends, bring your friends, click online when we're showing it. If we don't show the appetite for this sport, we can't move forward. So this is a whole group effort. Clubs, England Netball, Super League fans, let's make this the biggest season ever. Hell yeah. The the talk around this um, in in the run up to to the fixtures being released were things like that. Are we going to see last season's top four go head to head in the opening round? Tick, that's happening. How much of this was born out of you actually listening to the fans and thinking, right, okay, what directly do they want? It, it's all driven by fan insight. Everything we do is data driven, and that's a big thing for me. Is I want to make business critical decisions that move everything forward. So what I wanted to make sure is that we had a bigger footprint as a league, and that meant clubs and the centre all aligning. So you'll see yesterday, all of our comms went out at the same time. They all had a look and feel that was um, you know, across the league, except Mavericks, who did their own thing. However, I absolutely love what they're trying to do because they're pushing their brand and their marketing. But we're all trying to make sure that we're pushing this forward. We're then thinking about the timings of our, our games, where we play them, which fixtures where. So, you know, fantastic for Dragons to play at the, the Cardiff Arena against Bath. That's an, a huge pull geographically. So what we're trying to do is look at the best way to have the best fixtures and the best venues at the best times to get as many of our fans new and existing uh, across the line. So we're doing all of this with very limited budget. That's why data becomes really important around our decision making. There is plenty we want to ask you, and I know Tamsin does too, and we will get to that over the coming months because I know your door is very much open to communication, which which is brilliant. Uh, from both of you, Tamsin first, how much do you think the impact of the, the latest New Zealand series will have on the league? Because suddenly we're like, oh, so the rest of the world didn't realise this, this depth was there. Well, I think that's what's been quite funny, hasn't it? We we keep talking about our league. And, and the reality is we weren't sure where we we're at in terms of a pitch because we haven't yet had that opportunity to see those players. So many of our best go overseas and stay overseas for long periods of time. So it was really refreshing to see the likes of Barry Neal and Halley and, um, you know, even El McDonald, who's who's come over and then and said, right, I'm going to play in this league. I'm going to come play for England. Like, it was great to see those players absolutely thrive. And I, and I think it's stuff like that we've got to we've got to keep jumping on. And Claire, you mentioned something actually, it was really interesting about just bringing people along with you. I know that was something that happened really, really well at Sirens. You always had a new person sitting in the box that was from a business or from a different angle. And we keep talking about we, we we haven't got loads of money. Our marketing is what it is. We are trying to align stuff and we are listening to the fans, but we want to get new people on board as well. How did you do that in Sirens and how important is it that you that all these clubs now are making a conscious effort and all the fans out there are making a conscious effort to bring someone new to the game? Yeah, we just got to talk about it. 
And I think for me, what, you know, one of the things people always say when I talk about our sports, same with UT, like we're passionate about it. So that's your natural hook. And once we get people in front of our game, they're bought into it, whether it is a fan or a sponsor. I, I talked about the fact that I was able to sell actually really good sponsorship levels um, and numbers for Sirens in 2016 before we launched in 2017. And it was a brand and a sport that no one had seen and heard of before. But I talked about what we were going to do and what we were going to be. And at this moment in time, it's never been easy to talk about women's sport. But more importantly, it has never been easy to talk about netball. Netball for me is the most exciting proposition in the sports market. We are women's sport. We are a women's sport with a blank canvas that can absolutely shape and forge the way of what women's sport looks and feels like. It's about sportainment. Look at how we're the most digitally connected sport. We've got this huge participation base. We represent everybody. And we are moving into an era where we get to create and define what that looks like. We are not a female version. So let's be unapologetic in how we celebrate our sport and champion it. Businesses want to invest. We're a great investment. People want to consume new content. We've got it. There is storytelling. It is all in netball, but we've got to, to all be explicit in playing our part in telling those stories and pushing it out there. We are so untapped. And if we do that, we absolutely feel empower our, our, our way forward. Yeah, part of me is thinking, don't let the rest of the world see the league, uh, just because then we, I mean, they don't discover how good we are till right at the crucial moment. But I know that's a big thing for you going forward. Just finally, before we let you go, both of you have had well-made departures from Scotland, coming back to to work down with Mavericks. I know you're working already, Tamsin, but Claire as well, with you leaving for for England. For both of you, Claire, I wonder a few words for for Tamsin and what she achieved at Scotland. Uh, I actually feel a bit emotional because we talk a lot to each other all the time. Um, for me, I always, I was always grateful when people backed my vision for this relatively small nation, really limited budgets, but huge passion and belief. And, you know, bringing Kaz Atkinson on was a game changer for us. But then bringing Tamsin, I always talk about the Tamsin effect. Tamsin has power. You have power where you go. People follow, they listen, they want to play for you. And when you came in, you just drove a shift change. And I think what you're, you're leaving, when you look at all these youngsters, they've got two or three World Cups in there. They're cycles. Like you didn't just come in and think, how do I be shiny and new and get some quick wins? You thought, how do I build? And that for me as well is I hope that we've left foundations that new people can come on and continue to build from. Um, and that will be our legacy. But, you know, you were a dream to work with. And, um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that that you you stepped up and personally sacrificed so much to to be part of our journey. Oh, we've, well, thank you. Firstly, thank you. It is, it, you know how good today I am. I, all, all I will say is when I got that call from from Kaz and had my first conversation with Claire, it was a no brainer. There are only so many people you get to work with. You're lucky enough to get to work with that um, can make change and can be different. And uh, those two are forward thinking, creative, open minded. And wow, it was refreshing. There's not many people I'd sing a different national anthem for. Uh, Claire Nelson was one of those. So loud and proud. And it's been the best three I, years. I have the videos of it as well. And and in your tartan as well. You and Star and tartan was a moment. It was beautiful. <laughs> Definitely worth it for that. Uh, Claire, we're glad that you're in the role you're in now. But well done, both of you, on what you've achieved for Scotland and can't wait to see what the future's like for both of you. Claire, thank you so much for coming on Off the Court. Thanks for having me. Great to speak to Claire and I know we all did get a bit emotional at the end then about, about leaving Scotland, Tamsin, but excited for the next chapter for both Scotland and where they go next as well for you. Right, talking of next chapters, you mentioned South Africa that they might be frightening the world. We're going to see them in this Vitality Netball International Series at the end of year, Tuesday, the 5th of December, Saturday, the 9th of December and Sunday, the 10th of December, all on Sky, of course, tick, tick, tick. But who needs to really stick their hand up in the Netball Super League this season and in this series that, that maybe potentially when we've seen all that happened in New Zealand, has just maybe seen what might happen with England Park to one side for a bit? 
well, I think it's going to be a bib off this year, if I'm being honest. There are so many positions up to grabs and and Thirlby with the selections has made us no clearer on who's going to get that that final shot. I think look, I don't think South Africa will um will be ready yet for where they can get to, but they I'm hoping they'll bring in some new blood and we'll see some different different people there for England. I, again, I, I don't I'm not even sure where to start. Like what happens to Liv Sheen now? Like you know, South Africa, do we want to see Al back and Helen back and um uh, Sasha in there now? Do we want to? Do we want Liv Sheen in in that mix? Do we do Berry and and what happens to Sophie Drakeford Lewis now? And oh, is Jade coming back in? And and where does Amy Carter and Ellie Ratu? She plays centre all year at Mavericks, which you know she just might. Um, it, like where does this all start to fall? fall? And and then there's the keeper thing. Jeeves back in the country, so does that make sense for Jeeves to be in still as keeper, or do we just go now nah, that that chapter's done now? Let's bring in Hallie. Let's have, have we given up on Alice Harvey? Like I I genuinely don't even know where to start. It's craziness. And don't just don't start. Don't. It's someone else's problem. Let them get on. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Whatever. That's the- that is the joy. That is the joy that suddenly, not suddenly, there's always been this competition ready to bubble and, and come up. But now we're seeing all those questions asked as well. For you, what's it like, the feeling ahead of not just this series to come South Africa, but we're still a while off, clearly, the Netball Super League starting too. But is it, is it relentless now? How are things going to change, change for you at Mavericks? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I started my first under-19 session, which was brilliant. I'd like to just pick up on what Nelson said earlier as well about this whole Mavericks doing it differently. That was nothing to do with me, by the way, but I've clearly found my kindred spirit by joining Saracen's <laughs> Mavericks, who are a bit, a bit maverick. Um, so, yeah, look, look it's, it's, I'm, I'm loving it. My role has stepped up to full time. Um, being behind the scenes, being back in with a club, being genuinely back in with a club. God, I've missed it. I, I love that. I'm, I'm, gutted about the Scotland stuff but I'm I'm thrilled that I'm back in in the mix with the Super League and like you say just seeing everything tickle on because there is going to be so much happening this year and maybe it is the right time to do it you know new year building building phase year one like maybe this is the time to just go right everyone throw the bibs up just play yourself in and see what happens and and we'll get some nice little tasters along the way with South Africa and then the quads and then into Super League it's just head down now till the end of the season we got a little break after World Cup and now we are back in I'm just throwing something else for you to do if you could. You know, here's me wearing my World Cup merchandise. I would like off the court merchandise merchandise now that just says bib off, bib off. I mean, that might be all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I want a bib off, bib off, if not some personalised bibs. Too right. Throw them all up in the air and see what's landing. Uh, Tamsin Greenway, as always, a pleasure. Thanks to Claire Nelson, to Amy, to Sophie and to Gail as well. You can get in touch with off the court. Use the hashtag OTC or off the court if you're not as down with the kids as I am. I'm ready to bib off. I hope you are too. See you soon. Bye bye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.